So we saw in the previous video how to create a CSV file and how to update the contents. And that's most of the mechanism that we need to implement a user account system where users can register and log in. But there's one piece of the puzzle that's missing and that has to do with proper handling of passwords. So I'm going to give you some rules. The first rule is never send a password across an unencrypted connection. So if you have a form and you post a password, that password is going to be sent across either HTTP or HTTPS. And if it's sent across HTTP, that means the packets are going to be in clear text and anybody who can read them can see the data that's being posted. Even though it's not in the URL, it's still going to be in the request body and anybody who has access to the request will be able to see the password. So always set up a secure connection before you send any password data. So that's the first rule. And then the second rule is never store passwords in clear text on your system. So if you're running a web server and you have a user account file and you store passwords in clear text, anybody who breaks into your system or gets access to that file is going to know the passwords of all of your users. And many of your users probably have other accounts where they've reused the same passwords on those accounts. So if they get your password file, they will be able to hack into other people's systems, even though those other people did everything correctly. So if you can't store a password in clear text on your system, and the user sends you a password across a secure connection, how can you take that password and compare it? to the correct password. How, how can you verify that it's correct? And there's a trick involved in doing this. So the trick is to use something called a hashing function. And a hashing function is a one-way function that takes a buffer of data, like a password, and computes a numeric value based on that buffer of data using a one-way calculation. So one-way calculation is a calculation that's really easy to push forward in one direction and come up with an answer. But then when given that answer, it's difficult or impossible to reverse the calculation and recover the original message based on the result. So we call that result a hash code. So you're going to take the password, you're going to generate a hash code based on the password, and then you're going to store the hash code into your user's file. And then later, when the user tries to log in, they're going to send you the password in clear text. You're going to run the same hash function on that password, compare the new hash value to the hash value you have stored in your user's file. If the two hash values match, you know the user sent you the correct password. If they don't match, then you know the password's incorrect. So the key here is that because the hash function is not reversible, anybody who manages to get access to your user's file and has the password hashes in it is not going to be able to reverse those hash codes to recover the original passwords. So that's a secure way of dealing with passwords. Now let's just go ahead and see what this looks like. I'm going to go in and uh, I'll take my modify file. So let's start with my file and I'll delete all those contents and I'll create a new data file called users.csv and then I'll go to my modify file form and I'll change this label to username and this label to password and I want to ensure that I'm in a secure connection before I send any of that across. So I'm going to require secure. And then when the user clicks on the button and submits the username and password, an update file, I'm going to change this a little bit to edit users.csv. And then in modify file, instead of passing in the value, which is the password, I'm going to pass in password hash, 
of value, comma, password default. So this is going to take the value, it's going to calculate the hash from it, and then it's going to store that along with the username. And for the username, I'm also going to make this safe for HTML, so that if I display the username on a web page, it's not going to break any layout. So I'll use HTML entities for that. And now I have a really simple program that will allow me to create user registrations. So let me go ahead and reload. And I'm going to enter a username, John, and I'll type the password, test me. So this is probably not good because the password showing in clear text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify my form a little bit. I'm going to make the type be password. And that will happen on the next one. So Jane, test me. Now I should have the new form. And uh, Lee, test me. So now I've created three user accounts, and let's see what I have in my users.csv file. So the first column is the username, and the second column is a hash value based on the password test me. So all three of these accounts have the same password, but they get hashed to different values. And the front part here this describes what algorithm was used to generate this hash code so that PHP can verify it later. And then here's the actual hash, which includes both the hashed value of the password and something called a salt. So a salt is a random number, essentially, that's generated when I run the hash. And then the salt gets stored along with the hashed value of the password. So the salt is perfectly safe to share, but the salt is then combined with the password before it's hashed. So if I get a new password and I want to verify that it matches this, I can pull the salt out of here, rehash the password based on the new password and the salt, and then compare that result to the value stored in this file. And the salt gives you added security against something called a rainbow table, which we'll be looking at in the discussion this week. So the bottom line is that if I give you this value, there's no way that you can reverse this in a reasonable amount of time and recover the original password information. And even better, if you did manage to get access to this password, it wouldn't help you at all in getting this password or this password because the hash codes are completely different. And that's what makes this file safe to store on your system.